All right, great. Guys, um, thank you. Today is a very special day with a super special guest, uh, Stephen Te, who's the founder of Harmony and a good friend of mine for nearly three decades. Um, so there's a story behind why we're having him to talk about zero knowledge, uh, apart from the fact that you know Harmony has been sponsoring this course and, and giving out prizes. But there's a deeper, uh, maybe personal story I can tell you. So back in 2018, during the uh, crypto winter, uh, Stephen, when I was working with Harmony then, and Stephen told me to go and study this thing called zero knowledge proof. Back then, <laughs> I had no idea what it was. And I went to study it a little bit, and it was the winter, so everyone is a little depressed. But I think Stephen saw this is the perfect time to do studies, right? You know, during the winter, you don't, you don't play around. You, you really want to <clears throat> make yourself stronger. And I studied it for a little bit, and then I decided it was too difficult. And I gave up and I and I refused his order. <laughs> and and now not just I let him down, but I can say that how how what a fool I was. I mean, if I did study it, it would have been so great. I would have been so <laughs> it's much in advance of the game, right? So uh, that that tells you something. And so why Stephen knew about this, I think partly, you know, Stephen has a history of building big things at scale. He worked at Google. He built his first startup companies, uh, Spot Setter, which was sold to Apple. I knew that he was basically ready to, to retire. And he <laughs> basically came out of his retirement to do this Harmony project. And in part because he also has a PhD uh, from, from, U, from UPAN in computer science, which, which basically touch on a, a fair bit of cryptography and all the technology that he needs uh, mm-hmm. to, to do what his project now. So mm-hmm. I think it's his calling. He, he cannot not do this thing so he's a perfect person to to talk about um um, the topic today like clients bridges and some of the products that are ready for the market so no further ado so steven please take it away thank you uh welcome everyone uh most of all thanks for joining us today from all around the world i think the exciting thing here is um really getting to this uh whether cryptography research or building product now um, and that's what I will focus today. Because uh, Hagwan and I know each other for a long time and we play with different star ideas, thinking about what products we want to build, what the society need. Even uh, almost four years ago, when we talked about zero knowledge proofs, he actually wrote a paper uh, and uh, quick uh, ideas about like private data marketplace, right? And uh, how to put it on chain. It's a great idea. Um, but the emphasis is um, the market was very different then. And now it's really ready for many of you to build, to think about what are the product that will be ready for this market. So I'm gonna go through a few ideas. Um, we'll talk about what I know about both the, I would call it the product market fit. That's what people call um, to understand what are the things that are really ready that whatever you build, there will be a lot of validation, would optimizing for the, for the like usage in production, but at the same time, what are the users ready to take on so that when you try it, there'll be users giving feedback. And then how about maybe uh, would go through a few questions uh, to, so that um, we'll answer some the common thing that before I come back to go even deeper into two topics. The first one is they call it the stateless or the light clients. The second one is the bridges that really connect all the blockchains together so that we will go a little bit deeper on what are the even the technical architecture. If not some research, they're still very active. There are very, very few products in the market that are really uh, like trustless and secure so that you have a broad understanding I know you guys have done all the groundwork on um, what are all the math and fundamentals, if not playing with few libraries already. Wherever you start today, you're already way ahead of most most people, engineer research already. The question is, do you want to keep going? That's a challenge. Uh, most of the, uh, I, I've done quite a few startups uh, in my last 10 years. Um, and before that, I was in big, two big companies. The challenge of startup is not to start. It's actually to sustain um, your passion and going deeper and having validation. It doesn't be validation in terms of like acquisition or money or even users, but the validation that the technology is moving ahead. There are plenty of uh, market opportunity that you can like uh, try. Most of all, stay in touch with other entrepreneurs, if not researcher, maybe just engineers to keep building. So um, let me just, uh, we, I only have three slides, so it's very easy uh, today, um, just to give you some sense, one, let, let, give you an anchor, what we are talking about today. So let me share the first one. Um, it's not even a slide, but 
like to like get you um, excited about the topic. So the first, um, just really just a quick uh, overview. Um, you may have seen this um, document before to talk about um, what are the product ready um, in the market today. So as you guys know, um, um, like the concept of zero knowledge proofs has been for decades in research. We are tying it to the concept of a DAO, which I can tell you a little bit more um, in a general setting outside of this course, to think about why this matter. So as everyone understand, um, a DAO or a blockchain is really to group a group of community, if not developers together as a platform. We want to articulate why even um, this DAO, and in particular zero knowledge proofs, has a way of bringing out the uh, really why 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 zero knowledge proofs, right? And why this DAO? So we come up with a very simple way for everyone to remember. We know that zero knowledge is succinct. We know that it care about privacy and make things private by compressing the states together. And I want to give one more flair to it, which is the fairness if everything is on chain and help you to understand. So I always articulate even very technical concept in very simple words that everyone can understand and remember and hopefully really become a memes by itself. People do hard research and come up with math symbols and like come up with like long papers and have technology breakthrough. We understand all that. And I've done much of it uh, during my grad school and research afterward. But only very few researchers, if not scientists, I would say would be able to communicate the concept, if not bring it to the market by a very simple language. So I really come up with these few words. Hopefully you guys would agree and, uh, and help spread and think about it whenever you build product, if not even come up with a project that engage other researchers and engineers, succinct, private and fair. So with that, then that's very easy. Uh, if we agree with that, um, the product I'm going to talk about, we have different way to understand it. We have, um, we, we can deep dive into it, but then now is the dimension that we can analyze. Because because it's succinct, there's very few technology that work at the global scale. And what is the global scale? We're really talking about billions of users. If the state are not succinct, um, just by the definition of billion users, billion accounts, billion, um, billion users uh, every day, and because of N-Square, um, any communication network is supposed to be able open to anyone and can talk to anyone. It just cannot scale even beyond one, one project, one company, one platform. If it's not compressed to hopefully actually constant, if not logarithmic stay, if not succinct to that level, it just would not scale to a billion uh, users without a central server, obviously. N-square global network would not scale without being sustained. So we'll come back to it, uh, but that's why, um, as you guys may have heard of uh, Ethereum layer two and what is called roll up nows, and then being a, a, a client connecting to the network, but having a stateless um, state to connect just would not work without the succinct properties. And if it works, I call it the magical use cases, right? You will have 100x benefits compared to even what people talk about now, how to bring up the RPC endpoints to this network when indexing, when aggregation, if not just simple crawling of the data, processing of anal analyzing the data will fail. So anything that you can come up and applying the zero knowledge frame cryptography to this, which is magically work because like you will be not just a hundred times, I just like putting a number there, a hundred times faster, more scalable than any other technology, if not zero knowledge proofs. Hundred X benefits. It's going to be amazing to the users because like most of the, I would say platform and operations um, uh, technology now, and actually all the project now just would not work if we don't keep push harder to the zero knowledge proofs um, primitives. Because, um, as you guys know, Ethereum or all blockchain together aggregated serve less than probably just 10 million users uh, uh, every day. And globally, there's only like 100 million um, uh, users that actually like may have a tokens, may have bought into some Bitcoin, Ethereum, never mind using any of the products. So we are really at the cusp 
of bringing all these uh, research, in particular zero knowledge proof and cryptographic primitives, to production to beyond 10 million users. But the second point is just as important, uh, the privacy aspect. It has never been actually be a mainstream uh, product concept. People talk about it. Even the PGP, pretty good privacy, is actually, I, I would say, not used more than a million users, not daily. And people care about privacy in terms of a political statement, but again, not using it. People care about privacy, but they still need to trust a very good uh, centralized uh, service provider. Um, may not be big companies, but will be something that you trust that uh, entity, maybe somewhere really like secret, maybe they have good practice, they will tell you everything about transparency, but you still trusting a single entity to do your privacy, to hold, hold your data, to do your email, it's insane. Most of all, we are still trusting a very few players on the internet operator scale, with the DNS, where they're handling all the um, uh, like data transfer, for sure your email, for sure your domain names, for sure um, your payments, uh, you know, to keep all these operation uh, serving. So these are just operation and just data and just names and just asset. By the time you get to the privacy level, you would get a subpoena, you will get a, like a frozen of the bank accounts. I don't need to go into the whole why blockchain started, but the privacy aspect was never still used in products at all. I would say beyond a million users is why it's alarming. But the alarm is not for the lack of which but for the lack of products choices. You must tell me what are the product that really give you full privacy protection? Because I couldn't find any. Again, beyond 1 million users. There are two finally coming to the market because of zero knowledge proofs and all these uh, cryptography make it possible. Um, they're all kind of projects, startup, Obviously, lots and lots of uh, great investment into the market, you know, make it happen. But there are very few product in production. And I want to emphasize too, so that you know where to start. And I would love to hear more. Uh, hopefully with this course, we are already planning for the second one. Many of us are going to eat them for talk about what you guys have done and what we have learned the last few weeks. Because the next one, we want to bring in even hundreds of this project that you guys started to think about what are the private products that can we get built. In particular, you may have heard of two projects that are doing at least a good start. At least you can play with it today that many of you are engineers for sure, some understanding of research, strong math background. They can extend prototypes more and most of all, bring it to more users. The first one is called the mixers. Um, mixers mean I have the same asset as you do. I want to use some of it. There are many users um, that have just like cash, no one know who has what and fungible, meaning interchangeable. I just wanna mix it up so that no one know where it comes from and where it's going and who holds what and what transaction is tied to who. Again, Mixer is very different from exchanges. I'm not exchanging values. We don't have a price even to it. I have the same asset, you have the same thing, let's swaps, let's mix it up. So that's the original concept of coin mixer, even on Bitcoin, and there are lots of uh, innovation there because like, even the privacy was touched on in the original white paper, but not quite possible. Finally, there's a project called Tornado Cash that make it, possible to be very easy on Ethereum to mix up because to mix all your asset, you will need other people to mix with. The crazy thing is even the best project in the Tornado Cash is still not well used to the level that uh, would be like instant, very cheap. And really, really the hard one is actually just be able to um, use it like for anyone without thinking. There are only like tens of thousands of users and only like really less than um, tens of millions of volume so that you can actually still 
um, uh, like mix it, but like uh, you need to wait for a long time. We emphasize about this one because like it doesn't even require the price. You're not talking about multiple asset. You're not talking about which tokens. I have Ethereum, I have, I have Bitcoin. Can we mix it up so that we, we, we will know that I protect my own source? No one should know um, what, where the money is coming from. Again, all being legal though. Uh, if you want to do any legal activities, you should stop now, just drop the course. Uh, globally, there's no way that you can hide from uh, legal, uh, uh, legal uh, surveillance, uh, but the fact that you should have your privacy right to under legal use cases that they even need a subpoena, if not a court order, that anything you do privately should be up to you. Only if you are being suspect, if not like legally challenged, that the activities that you have done privately, again, just between citizens and yourself, only then you'll be uh, challenged in court and you still have your um, constitutional right to protect yourself. I don't know about elsewhere, but at least that's what US gives you. I don't know about whether globally when, but this should be a human rights to have privacy. The second use case is called authentication. Finally, people understand that Google lock-in is great, Facebook lock-in is what built the entire platform, and Apple lock-in just the last two years has been a fantastic upgrade to even privacy, I would say, but that's not the end game. To know the same identity across the platform, you must be able to do uh, pseudo uh, uh, anonymous as well as multiple accounts, as well as full control, and as well as full trace of uh, your users by your own choices. So authentication is something what even Victalik and the Ethereum community talk a lot about since last year. They actually identified that as a main use case beyond a DeFi and a NFT fund. You guys know those already. Authentication, just like um, asset mixing, should be the fundamental use cases of identity, of reputation. It's really the building block. It should be so simple too. Just like mixing coin, right? It should be so, so simple. So authentication coming back here, why it's so critical is each of the network need to protect itself as well. You need to know where you're coming from, who you are, link of accounts, but it cannot do it by themselves. You should have full control of it. So just like Google ID, just like Facebook ID, the concept is very simple, but can you do it anonymously? The great thing is I put 1 million, uh, 1 M, as you see the line here to a uh, mixer. I actually believe that even in 2022, even we push for it, the entire industry push for it. Very people would actually have the need, they want to or know how to do a coin mixing. But for authentication and digital identity and lock-in, everyone should be have that power and use it. You shouldn't type in password anymore. You shouldn't have to worry about like tens of passwords and mixing all them up and trusting another password manager. As a matter of fact, that would be also a great touch point and bridge to the web two world. Meaning whatever they used every day now on your phone, on the web that you use now would have a great opportunity to, to integrate with blockchain through authentic authentication. So I really believe that it can be a 10 million users use cases right this year, really happening right now, if we all push for it. So I'll touch on one more point and I hope Hagwan, Professor Hagwan Lau would actually uh, speak again, just hopefully represent you guys to ask a few questions to like help me regather the thought around all these products. The last one is called the fair, the fairness of many of the use cases and data. So to talk about fairness, um, it's a very broad topic in economics, political science, if not sociology, people talk about fairness in different contexts. In, in math, it's very simple. Do you have true randomness in the system? And in math, it's very, very interesting, especially cryptography, if not information coding theory, code, uh, coding theory. Randomness is actually very well defined by now to say whether you can measure the entropy, whether you can repeat it, whether you can verify it. The whole verifiable randomness is really becoming a primitives that only blockchain make it possible. 
So it's a big topic in like VRF and VDF now to talk about randomness. And that's why it's exciting. Because again, before it was not possible, people ask for it. People actually like fake it both in the system and should be from, from the real world, but it's actually not possible because um, there was never a global way of like even doing a spacing of a multi-party computation to generate the randomness from the beginning. People don't trust even of a, like a ceremony with hundreds of people to ger- generate a seat of a randomness for you to begin. That's how a virtual it gets when there are millions, if not billions um, of asset at stake, but it's now possible now. So whether lotteries, for sure, anything that you uh, have a fair chance of allocation should be generating from the same randomness that you don't need to trust a state entity to talk about whether you, 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 you won a lottery or you'll be able to earn of a fair chance to, um, to, to enter any competition or asset allocation. But in fairness, there's another aspect of it is about all the funding and votes. So it turned out by the time you allow anonymous and private uh, allocation and lottery, there are all kinds of spam and bots attacks. And by the time, even though it's in the open, everyone have the identity to log in and ask for grants and funding, there will be collusion behind the back. So there's a really fun project called Minimal Anti-Collision Infrastructure, MACI, that becomes super critical when last year Gitcoin actually do the open funding using something called quadratic um, funding that they actually study it, that so many projects actually come, 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 come on board and say, oh, I vote for you. Now I have more traction. I'm going to come up with another project and split into two. The whole concept of fairness and openness with blockchain becomes super critical when they actually allow anonymous um, participation. And that's what the whole concept of Bitcoin, right? You don't know who is the validator miners coming in and you allow everyone to try. The collusion is real. And that's what actually most of the uh, blockchain community talk about. And I think fairness will touch on it. And the first step is to actually study what are the anti-collusion for voting and for funding mechanism to come in. That actually is your knowledge proof we'll touch on. So with that, I'm going to take a pause. Just let me take some water break, but also let Hagwan actually maybe recap it and ask a few questions then. Yay, thank you. Thanks, yeah. Um, Thank you. So um, this is great. I think the, the, the course has somewhat, I, I told you to cover some of these concepts already, but never mm-hmm. in a very clear way, and especially uh, regarding connecting to the market. So we focus mm-hmm. so much on unpacking some of these really complicated uh, uh, equations and we go some, somewhat into the math and then we went under the hood for some of these protocols like Tornado Cash. Um, we, we had we had Roman Seminov from from the founder from from Tendo mm-hmm. Cash came in and gave us a tutorial. Mm-hmm. So I think we went to some of the technicalities, but but thinking mm-hmm. about the market, I think that's really the exciting part, right? Because the mm-hmm. the timing cannot be more right. Um, mm-hmm. I I have several questions about that. When mm-hmm. when uh, I think we talk about uh, authentication very briefly in class, we we actually mm-hmm. went into software. A semaphore, sorry, no. we went to semaphore, the, mm-hmm. the protocol, and we did some assignments about it. But the mm-hmm. way that you mentioned it is is um, is quite different, and I think it's much more useful because in the semaphore, it came out like a much more abstract tools, right? How you can signal and and do this public signaling. But the 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 use case you seem to hone in on is really about almost like signing in for your for your digital identity. Do you see mm-hmm. that that's why the, that's because it's so intuitive to use it that way? essentially mm-hmm. as a replacement of your password manager. You think that's where the 10 million users are gonna come in? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, very great question for me to like jump back to the market part. I think you guys are all like scientists, math and engineer at heart, right? But we have to remember even the uh, Satoshi, he started by understanding the society need and understand why this technology have a chance to have a, honestly a new way of building a radically fair or like completely separate economic system, financial system, but also technology platform for our generation to come. 
So I was at heart of a, like a math guy as well as a love to code um, and be coding for like decades before I jumped back to ask why the web platform that is different. And most people couldn't answer that. Uh, most people don't need to answer that. They love coding. They love to build. But again, if you remember why Satoshi wrote the first white paper, he actually have a strong um, both understanding, but also wish for the social impact. Same thing with Ethereum founder, like he had been writing for Bitcoin Magazine and talk about the game um, aspect and the asset, uh, custody aspect, uh, so that he really know why this is important. So I will use the authentication as example to talk about why this is important, not from a technology or how to do it, but why you would care. Because uh, most researchers, when they build stuff, when they write a paper, they got this courage. How many papers of the same topic can you keep writing uh, and improving like 1%, 10% every year? Why blockchain has been exciting? Because many cryptographers get into the space, not just for the hot money, but for the chance that everything you build, any improvement you have in the research will have immediate impact. And the cycle is very quick. You can really prototype in a few months. You can push out of a full-blown platform in a year that many of the cryptographer now get into the um, market because the validation is so strong and they'll be ongoing and you can have your research arm. You can really engage openly. Most of all, all the research is open. All the source code is uh, shared that wherever you are building, you already like, forking off other people call and you'll be sharing um, the knowledge and there'll be many people joining your project that the, val the validation for the market and user is very strong. Authentication is really a great use case. Um, we, we know some of the semaphore developers as well. And just like we met the Tornado Cash funding team, they actually have a strong understanding of the semaphore project. They may not write everything out. That's what actually media, if not like non-technical non, non uh, people in this market do. They, they write why, they write, um, they, they give talks on YouTube to, uh, just like me, I actually want to bring this use case to more people. You don't have to, right? That's why the semaphore is very, the, the whole white paper is very technical and it's just talk about, we have all these primitives, right? Go have fun, right? Go build a product, right? But you should, you shouldn't forget. And I, I, I don't ask you to do like, uh, like UX marks and like do user study and do customer service to know why. All I ask you to do is one thing. Estimate how many users in 2022 is possible for this product, right? That's all. I, I'm also a scientist at heart, right? When I make it to a science game or a scientific claim, it is much more fun to you. Right? It's not like, oh, you need to make a deck or a mark and test with 10 users, right? Whatever I'm predicting here, I hopefully I'll be like wrong for half of it, but I will guess some of them right, right? And hopefully you will tell me why my number is wrong because I did a few days of research uh, and understanding, trying a few product and that's the number I come with. All the numbers I have is only one and zero, right? Hopefully you help me add a zero there and you add a zero there, but you need to guess one of them right. And that's where the fun part is, right? Then you will try out the product and understand why, even as good as a product as a mixers, there's only $10 million volume, right? Why as good as a roll ups, it still couldn't go beyond the 10 million users this year, right? It forces you to ask, is a research have a way to have a 10% um, breakthrough or 10 times breakthrough in terms of optimization? In terms of um, users, do we need 1 million users to mix it up? Or we just need 10,000 users to mix it up? It forces you, even in the technology that you build, whether that works, it's not just a framework, but all the way to the users. Because uh, if Mixer doesn't work with a million users, there's no way that you can build a unit swap with privacy today, not this year, right? Whether you build, it works in math and theoretical study and uh, big old complexity, but it would not work in practice. The funny thing is like every year, even the last four years, every year there are probably 10 projects that raise $10 million to build a private decentralized exchange, right? Like, I mean, Uniswap barely works two years ago and people already did fundraising uh, like, and building, right? And you're building the wrong thing.
right? It's okay to raise 10 million and have 10 people building it. It just won't work this year. So don't do that, right? Figure out the mixer first, unless you can bring in 10 million users right away, right? Why mixer works and Uniswap doesn't work? Hopefully you will tell me, but let me just give the answer here. Mixer is talking, talking about one asset. By the time you have like Uniswap, you're talking about like hundreds of assets and you, each of them need like hopefully 100,000 of users. So you just like cutting yourself really thin it's just the math won't work out by a time again of users. So authentication is the same thing. Why I put authentication much big, bigger is it's really possible. Even Facebook and Square, which is a payment platform, and Twitter, actually, by the way, is integrating to Ethereum for the NFT and the ENS already. So it's really, really possible. ENS is still not a private, uh, it's not a, uh, a, a uh, universal locking yet, but we are really getting close, right? By the time Twitter actually fully integrated with ENS, you really can have, I'm talking about uh, hopefully active users. Right, that you will come to the 10 million users level. If you think about that, um, there'll be other pu people pushing uh, for the integration to like whether Reddit or like Twitter is really close that you can think about whether we'll get to the 10 million users. Yeah, it does sound like a very powerful thing that almost even the, the Web3, this is a good use case where the Web2 people should have needed. They would have liked to have this gadget if, it, if you can just like always lock in without passing your password over. But to show that I have, you know, run a run a little program on my client that has, you know, check my password, and I just show you that proof. That seems yeah. to be something that, you know, even people who don't care about crypto, don't hold Bitcoin, should want yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so yeah, go ahead. Yeah, why why is the product not there yet? I mean, this. <laughs> like, I actually need more. I need uh, further study to answer the question, and uh, I, I have some like like I have like 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 tons of reference in in this page to support it, right? But I don't like coherent framework to tell you guys yet. So as you guys see, I only show a few numbers here, and that's what I actually want want the feedback on. Uh, there are only a few product that I really believe have a chance to go to ten million users, and it should be right. Uh, global awareness of like Bitcoin, Ethereum asset, if not NFT, is really beyond 100 million users now. Why are there so few products that use zero knowledge proof, if not privacy here? It's a good question to ask. And that's where I'm asking uh, for better yeah. feedback. In particular, um, I will go in a little bit deeper about um, like roll-ups, uh, maybe next course, maybe even touch on today. It's a great use case now. 90%, if not 99%, of actual impact of the use cases of zero knowledge proof today is actually for the roll ups and like even just a simple have a CK sync back to the Ethereum, which is great, right? People talk about all the concepts at the same level, but by the time you put a number next to it, the hardest one is actually users. Because for, for money, it's very easy, right? You, you, you can talk about volume, maybe bots generated, but users is very hard to fix. Is it, is it fair to say in this sense, I think privacy, so I, I mentioned that there, there is not product. I shouldn't offend anyone here because it would be public. So there are, of course, products like new ID, like NUID. There, there mm -hmm. are products there, but, mm -hmm. but it seems to have not gotten as much traction. Mm -hmm. Is it fair to say because people need to be educated to, to realize mm -hmm. they need to use it, right? So the privacy. Mm -hmm. So in yeah. a sense, that might come a bit later. Whereas succinctness, I can see they don't need to be educated. Everybody knows yeah. that gas fee is, is, yeah. is, is, not, is not sustainable. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Punitive. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. in that sense, where do where do what do you think fairness stands? So fairness, <laughs> is it fair to say it's kind of like almost like a security issue until yeah. someone get really hacked really bad, until yeah. someone think of some really clever attack that exploit the lack of perfect randomness in in mm -hmm. in whatever basic protocol. No, nobody would care to. You think that might be a similar yeah. situation? Yeah, you are right. Uh, everything here requires education, if not even customer support on some of these products, if not promotion video, for sure incentives, right? If there's no incentive to move, even the, 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 the platform and the product is 10 times better, people actually don't have such inertia and won't change, right? That's why NFT is a fun thing. That's why all these tokens is a great thing. Token by nature, if not the accents of it, it's just incentives to do changes together. Right, to, to have a movement, to believe in the future together. So uh, education incentive is all true, but you guys also have to remember, you guys are, we are pioneers and you guys for sure are the builders for the future, right? So you are not thinking about education yet. You're not thinking about how to write a user manual yet. 
we have to figure out which, even which product, which cryptography activities have a chance to, like everyone is improving Plunk, everyone is uh, optimizing the circuits. We have a chance to a faster circuit. We may have a chance to have like all the software productionized in the open, open source without like trust the ceremony this year, right? So uh, you guys are really pioneers and builders, if not like, like really the inventor of new technology. Education is always, always the last mile. Right. What is in between is um, when you when you ask people to build a product without asking them a password, they will they will notice. You don't need to ask, you educate them, right? The, right now, like for sure, myself, I manage hundreds of passwords and how to tell our parents how, how to lock in a new product. I just got a new Oculus. You have to like wear your headset and type in the password and sign a new account. This is ridiculous. I can't do it. I don't want to do it. There's no way the future is like this, right? And to talk about authentication to the level that you must not have one identity to each of the product. It's a given, right? They just force you to. You're being plugged in. You you have no choice, right? But I, I don't want to come back to just talk about like why blockchain and why like anti big company, anti government in, in, in general. I actually really think that, uh, I, that's why I call it the, the, like the magical use case. When you show people magic, you actually don't need to even like educate them or even entertain them. You, you show up. Uh, it's really how Apple build products. I was only for, for Apple for a short period of time, but uh, they always say it. We want to surprise and delight the customers. And zero knowledge proof is really, really magical. Every time I touch them, I really I was like, no way it's possible. It's really magic that uh, don't need the education to tell the users. Yeah, we need to look for me. I know we should, we should look for that magic. And I know that we should move on to succinctness and there where, that's yeah. where we can talk a lot, lot more about exciting infrastructure stuff. But before, sure. may, I, may I just ask one last question about fairness, um, about mm -hmm. anti-collusion. I mm -hmm. think those people here looking at this, you know, this, um, you know, two, three times two table here, we realize <laughs> that anti-collusion yeah. has a, has the smallest number. And yeah. accordingly, in the course, actually, we also touch on it very briefly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, when I look into Macy, I think one thing that seemed very not satisfying to me was mm -hmm. the fact that essentially they are trying to mm -hmm. make bribery not so easy because yeah. then the, the the bribe receiver cannot yeah. prove what he or she has done, right? So yes. after, after voting, you can't prove it. Yes. So that's a, that's one way of blocking one kind of collusion. Yes. But we know that there are many other kinds of collusion that could happen, right? Mm -hmm. and, and and how about if, if some one person just create multiple identities? Mm -hmm. Then I have five votes, right? And and yes. even if you try to randomly do sortition, well, I can create 500 identities. Yes. Then I would be more likely to be randomly picked. How yeah. is there any way of addressing that the, the way you see yeah. it? Yeah, I wish... Um... We really study even the sociology part, for sure, the economics part of something called the radical um, markets. I think it's really tied to it, why people keep talking about quadratic voting, quadratic fairness, quadratic funding now. They're very, 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 very fundamental uh, primitives and so simple and so possible to implement as, as simple as radical markets. And they come back to like the fairness and the uh, collusion part. So I would touch just a little bit. The concept of radical market is actually very simple. They actually allow um, people to uh, even group together, but not be able to talk about the incentives so that uh, when there are millions of uh, bots and people fighting for the same resources, can you even allocate fairly um, when people group together, can you fight off the bots and bribery? There's no answers, but only primitives to play with. And that's what the anti-collusion talk about. Um, we know for a fact that it need to come back to even real world identity, uh, even um, fairness to humans, not just bots. So the collusion and even the voting and for sure the funding part, uh, people already have to tie back to digital reputation already. So they care about something called the, um, the POET, P-O-A-P, um, that if you actually attend physical events, people give you a sticker, right? If you have been uh, uh, like, uh, like trying some of the new DeFi product, if not NFT airdrops, people know that you have early records of being early in certain community. 
So to me, it's about the primitives that is interesting here, not the end state of like everyone get the same amount of money, same, uh, even same amount of, of even opportunities. Because at the end of the day, um, uh, human should be actually, uh, like machine and human should be indistinguishable very soon. And again, the smart people will always figure out how to even control millions of people. So to say that everyone have the same vote is actually just for the, for the fun of the game. As a matter of fact, that's why, <clears throat> that's why the US election become a billion dollars and should, should soon like tens of billions campaigns and game is just for the show, right? You are literally controlled by the state to well, listen to what they want you to vote and what's not, right? So there's no end state of everyone have the same vote, everyone have the same money, and there's no collusion behind it. We just want to allow more primitives for sure the radical market to think about their, like the um, the self-imposed task as well as like really capping the top so that the bottom really doesn't fall, fall off the bottom and the top, mm -hmm. have a way to have a common pool of resources back to the uh, market. That's all the primitives is all about. And coming back to the collusion for the uh, anti-collusion and fairness is the same thing, right? We just have more way to tie it back to the digital reputation that you have been building and maybe have some way of a physical event that you attended, which is the badges for the real life events and tie it together. I don't think we know the end game yet, which is really the singularity coming in with all the humans and machines. Yeah, that's right. And I, then I can see that yeah, maybe the current state, maybe in 2022, it doesn't look so 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 good that we can fix anti-collusion, but the but the primitives are there, you're right. The, the NFTs it, it are yeah, yep. DAOs, and other people are having to worry about online identities. That actually could be interesting. Um, so let's move on to our our favorite topic, probably succinctness. <laughs> Sounds I, good. I introduced the, the issue because back in 2018, if I actually listened to you and studied this. Then we. <laughs> That's what we have built. Huh? Yeah. So I'm already three years late and trying to catch up. But but as you said, like the night is still young, right? But there's still mm -hmm. a lot to be done. So besides sure. all these like CK roll-ups that are now mm -hmm. all the rage, all these mm -hmm. layer two solutions, where you see yeah. things are going this year or, or sure. the next few years even. Yeah. I would say, yeah, sure. Let me jump into uh, the next topic. So the next topic, you guys see it, right? It's the light clients and the sailor clients. You guys see it? Yeah, I'm switching the tabs. So. Um, so I would say like zero uh, knowledge, uh, like virtual machines as well as rollups, uh, for sure. Like even as simple as like a staging is a big topic. Uh, hopefully we'll actually even have an entire course, invite all the good speakers. Even a proper survey is really long. I haven't really found just one good article and I'll be summarizing one slide and being comprehensive. Hardest of all of a framework. There are a lot of comparison chart. I mean, we have some of our own. Uh, I, I'm not getting the topic because I want to find something uh, like very particular topic that I really haven't seen a good a survey or product yet. So I want to be the first one to tell you, right? Uh, in terms of uh, uh, roll-ups and stay sync and uh, even zero uh, knowledge EVM, there are a lot of good articles there. And just jump on it if that's what the topic you're interested in. I haven't really found one and it's very pressing already. And I'll tell you why it's such an important topic now. It's the whole concept of, can we build clients that are not growing in the same rate as the network and the accounts? As you guys should know about like big, like uh, complexity, big O of like just one, which is your knowledge, if not even logarithmic, it's actually not possible outside of the network. From the network, it's very fun. There are lots of like, even recursive snark, which is Mima that's building. For sure, like with the roll up, it's really possible. What is not possible so far is we have only barely been able to come up with a consensus algorithm that globally to do transactions. But then whatever happened on your mobile phone, whatever happened on uh, the, mar uh, the market for exchanges of your NFT, still taught to a centralized um, endpoints because we need to do indexing, we need to do aggregation about multiple platforms because you have like so many accounts uh, across uh, different uh, users, whether play games or like uh, to, to, uh, to do even as simple as transfer of payments. It's what like clients, um, whether SPV from the Bitcoin and like like clients and stateless in um, uh, Ethereum 1.5 and 2.0 talk about, surprisingly, there's still no products today in production. 
I make such a claim because I really want to know the contrarian evidence. I mean, there are a few, there are a few actually, like you can play with and actually try, but not at scale. It's why I opened up the topic today. And the issue is already very pressing. Um, even MetaMask got uh, like talk about if not attack to actually use only Infera, which is a centralized endpoints for RPC, for sure it still hold custody of the asset when you use OpenC because they must, because there's no way to like um, push it back to so many uh, NFT marketplace. OpenC is becoming a custody of the asset when you need to like means or like uh, buy or for sure auction across marketplace. Think about it again. We have networks that are fully decentralized as well as like fully self custody already, but not the actual product and the clients that you interact with the network. You don't have a mobile phone that don't like when you hold up your exchange um, uh, uh, and uh, exchange your asset and uh, like, uh, like auction of your NFT asset without talking to a centralized party. Infera or NFT marketplace, which is okay. We are not attacking them, right? They are doing great. Like without Infera, none, most, if not uh, all of the like uh, Ethereum product just won't work, right? It's what we want to fix today. So let me start with uh, one key idea that we need that in order even to start. So we have consensus, which is uh, decentralized and everyone participate already. Everyone know Bitcoin and Ethereum is actually not that different from that using poor work. Uh, many of the sharding technology using uh, like PBFT still have to work uh, of a committee. We have pretty good sense that it works at least for POW with like uh, tens, if not hundred thousand of uh, nodes, right? Same thing with um, with uh, uh, stake. Um, we are proving it works with like at least uh, like hundreds of validators that even the pools on chain delegation, on chain slashing, few changes, all seems to work. At least there are many production networks, there are billions of uh, valuation that seems to work. What still didn't work right now really didn't work, really didn't work because that's what I deal with every day with our engineers to make it work, is the data. They couldn't, they couldn't sync to the state of the latest network. They couldn't bootstrap the network to the latest, um, latest uh, fast enough. It required like one, almost a one, tri uh, one terabyte of data just to stay in sync. It required weeks uh, of, um, uh, of uh, time to load up bootstrapping. It's really the state of art now. Isn't it a great problem to solve as, a, as an engineer, but actually also a researcher. That's why we are taking this dual knowledge proof approach. Again, it's one terabyte of uh, 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 data um, to think about. It is really about anything you do will complex, uh, will compress weeks of time. It required thousands of dollars to put to uh, like uh, uh, like low uh, to to start some of these nodes so that you have a chance to participate in the network is the challenge that you signed for, right? And the top project solving uh, uh, attacking this problem it used to call the lazy ledger. Uh, now it's Cilicia. To think about not just consensus but data first. How do we distribute all this data? probabilistically, but also like uh, like guarantee. Uh, so they call it the um, like 2D uh, erasure coding, uh, fraud proofs uh, and probabilistic sampling. Those are something that will be very, like, very easy to understand once you get into like the paper and the engineering cell, but I want to tell you why first. So Cosmo, as well as Cilicia, took the approach of modular architecture, which I think is fantastic. Finally, again, the recurring theme today is what are the primitives? You can build from math, there are new like uh, cryptography primitives that you can add to it. And at this level, it's really the data that they are able to build that not even execution, but how to have data availability, what are the primitives that they are still building so that all the states, you don't need to sync up to an order of N, but uh, here, I believe it's just logarithmic of it uh, and very efficient of it that are possible. And they are like, um, like at the end of the issue knowledge proof and vector or polynomial commitment, it's actually a very similar te technique of uh, coding theory back in the time when people actually need to do all these, um, uh, um, even raptor, raptor Q is something that we study back in the time when we need to talk about basic, uh, how to do this thing, and it's exactly the time now. The first uh, stateless client will be just as simple 
as um, really just, they call it the data claim now here for Celestia is where we're gonna start. So I'll take a pause here, maybe Hakwan, um, um, maybe, maybe uh, comment a little bit about what, he's, what he saw about this approach. Yeah, I, I think it's great. I mean, one thing I, I you can say is actually one of our uh, Harmony alumni, of course, Nick White, is exactly gone to this uh, direction in Cilicia. So yeah. we have friends in that in that area too. Um, we haven't covered this in this course, this aspect of it, but we will in a couple of uh, weeks when we, we talk about stateless clients. Maybe I can ask something general mm -hmm. on behalf of the for class sure. and just to maybe also open up for other people to ask questions. It's, so it sounds like the, a lot of this is fairly technical stuff. So from, yeah. from there, from the student's perspective. So this course is already a crazy, you know, intensive course, people come in not knowing the, the basics of zero knowledge. And now we at the phase that we are moving on to mm -hmm. building the final product. But I think most of them will be building a product, uh, mm -hmm. mostly like an application, right? Mm -hmm. So these are easier, you, you learn solidity, and mm -hmm. then you try to do that. Getting into infrastructure work seems to mm -hmm. require a much deeper level of Jedi master, <laughs> master. Do you, do you yeah. recommend students to try to do that or, or do, should they just try to understand what's going on? How, how do they participate in a meaningful way? Yeah, the answer is yes. And yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the fun thing about blockchain is there's no, no one tell you that, oh, um, this is only hold by Google servers or like this is only a government like church or holding the ID that you can touch. Um, and this is the recurring theme of my, uh, not even my career, of my childhood, of my learning, of like being curious, being academic and researcher. Um, there's no magic there. There's no dragons um, to stop you. You are right. Um, the fun part is you want to build a project, fundraise, and build a, build, build a company, even out of it. Uh, it is a good idea to think about like smart contract and solidity because that's really where the last part of like uh, engaging the users, right? If not, just build a dashboard, right? But then the great thing is there's really nothing magic. And if you even know the basic math, it's going to be very similar of just finite maths, if not just probabilistic theory that uh, they already have proven it. It's really a matter of bringing the research to production. When we say the Celestia technology, like the fraud proofs uh, paper, it's actually four years ago already. Uh, we read the first preprint back four years ago. Um, it's actually the first, uh, I, I believe the first peer reviewed uh, paper that Vitalik wrote with the founder of of, um, Mustafa uh, that started this project. So the fact that you start now, even in your radar and you play with the technology is going to be the key problem that the entire industry will try to solve the next few years. So there again, you don't need to really even have users or even um, build a smart contract product that even secure audit. The great thing about all this product is um, even um, of a data availability, data sync is such a small problem you would think, but it's really a billion dollar scale that Infera, like the graph, Covalent, every indexing project trying to build, right? And they don't even need to build out all the like, like mobile clients or anything, uh, not even smart contract level. Uh, I, I make it very explicit here, right? Not execution, right? You don't even need to think about what would the EVM look like? What would the smart contract layers look like? You only need to partner with other, in this case, Cosmo, and they are really building the Rust infrastructure as well, pick the fund that you want to have, right? I really believe not all, everyone here would be doing smart culture or application or even dealing with users, but the fact that there's a huge opportunity here is what I want to identify. Yeah, mate. so Pran has a question, but may I just follow up on this? In the sense that yeah. it would be fair to say, if you get into infrastructure work, although it might, it, it, it requires some deeper dive, you have to learn Rust and, and and it's harder to work uh, in a small team by, by yourself, yeah. et cetera. Mm -hmm. But is it fair to say the, the trend seems to be, will be much longer lasting. Mm -hmm. So what you show earlier in the six products, we yes. can see maybe in a year, but all of this stuff here about the infrastructure, probably these, this infrastructure will continue for years to come, right? Mm -hmm. So the investment, yeah. if one does go, go about learning Rust from the Rust book, <laughs> page one, it will pay Page off. Yeah. <laughs> so only professors talk about infrastructure as if it's a magical <laughs> dragon thing. <laughs> uh, uh, really, they, they're not uh, like infrastructure because like infrastructure, you, as you think about electricity or water, like facilities or like uh, like uh, like the, like the, like 
the Amazon delivery infrastructure, right? Infrastructure in the sense that uh, they are just as math and zero knowledge as you, this course and all these audiences are about. And then they're not like user facing, like you are not writing user manual or doing a uh, infomercial or doing advertisement to ask people to do some of that. Infrastructure in the sense that they are modular components, product in its own right that is ready for the market today. So infer inferior is the infrastructure. Right, but all the project work with them, so it's a product. If you think about, it. so the concept of like whether this is math and research, all the way to is it just tokens and incentives and users, to in the middle whether this is infrastructure or it's a libraries or like is this a, like platform matching by itself, it's all blurred now, mm -hmm. right? If you haven't really know the opportunity there, if you haven't built it before, if you are uh, more of a user perspective and uh, think about what you day to day interact with you wouldn't hear this name uh, normally. You, you may not need to know them in a decade, right? Like who is your like uh, new like power plant supplier? You don't need to know that. That's, those for sure is infrastructure. But the great thing is, this is a time for builders to build anything and you'll be ready for the market. And this is ready for the market. Mm -hmm. That's great. I mean, I, I, I always wanted to say it, but I don't have the... the, 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 the... <laughs> The record to show. I mean, you guys actually have been building these things for for decades. I mean, for yeah. not that for years at least. Yeah. So yeah, I can I can see that if you say that it's doable, I I think the students. Oh, for sure, like, for sure, yeah. for sure. I have a, so a question from Pran. Uh, it's actually going back to the product situation. Mm -hmm. So if we build a product based on CK proof, how do we market mm -hmm. it? How do we get some support right. from from chains mm -hmm. like Harmony? Because if we're oh, doing yeah. it, it's nice, like how do people know that we even built something? I can see that for the yeah. case of these uh, like clients and, and mm -hmm. stainless, if it's usable, people mm -hmm. would find a way to do it. But mm -hmm. what about an application? How do we promote it? For other applications in general, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So a lightly touch on that. I know we only have 15 more minutes, so I'm just going to power through as you guys have been powered through for this course about some of the like key points here. I'm not going to go through all those, not possible. I'll answer the market question. As a matter of fact, that's probably like I'm the only like person that not about doing cryptography every day, but like from, from really from a product perspective and market perspective, I can give a bit more sense. I do have like a like few more fun stuff. I want to, I prepare for quite some time that I was just like in 15 minutes go through. But I'll start with the market market question so there are two parts uh any like anything that you start with some of the links here i can tell you for a fact it's really ready for market it's very simple we could we could not like we are a big project or we couldn't get fast enough onto like ETH, uh, ETH scan inferior like even covalent because the demand is insane Right, not just because there are lots and lots of money, lots and lots of people in the market um, like using it, um, is we are barely only at the 1% adoption for the global market. And there are like tens and even hundreds of projects building for it. And the infrastructure and the product part, uh, even if I couldn't satisfy all the need, right? And the, and the money is big, right? So any even, even incremental improvement, uh, 10%, it's gonna be insane, um, great great demand from the market. And we are not even talking about the 100X improvement where like if you are a researcher and math guy, you're gonna be blow everyone's mind if you come up with even one tiny improvement in the circuit, if not in the math part, uh, if not a new scheme possible. So as a researcher, it's as fun as a time. But you ask also the far end of the spectrum. If I build another funding mechanism, if not just a showcasing of a random dice for lottery, who is going to use it? And that's also a great point. So a few years ago, there's so many of these like city games and like, like gambling and lottery that no one uses. Don't build in isolation anymore. So today they have two big primitives. One is DeFi, the other one is NFT. That any new ideas, think about it. Let me just use NFT. DeFi is a big topic, so I'm not going to touch on it today. Uh, like so many different like uh, like um, uh, economic incentives for people to like uh, they call even DeFi 2.0 now to think about what are the long term sticking and uh, like uh, like uh, like like uh, fasting game. DeFi, the rarity of each of the attributes, the fact that you can have lottery of allocation when everyone is fighting to mint at the same time. The fact that um, should it be over a week of time, should latecomer have a chance to win another one of like a, of the NFT the community owns. 
the tracking of royalties when you have a new campaigns and a derived um, asset. These are the, um, I would call it movements actually, um, that you should build a primitives and product around. So you're not building a, a new application of lottery in isolation, right? Imagine you're building a lottery and fairness for an NFT project. And guess what? There are like literally tens, if not, I would call it hundreds of new NFT projects built every day. They, they airdrop to like tens of thousands of users and they would have still like millions of uh, dollars at play. So when you're building a new apps, try to tie it. And the biggest one now is NFT. And if you're a radical, if you just don't want to think about all these silly games of NFT, build it for DAOs. Right, and ask what DAO is, and which DAO is good, and which DAO is having traction. Is what I want to tell you as well. So for Harmony, we also committed to building like ten thousand DAOs in the next few years. Right, ask me why. Ask me which one. Ask me like who is going to use it. Right. So we're going to put in literally hundreds of million dollars into all these ten thousand DAOs. So no matter what primitives you build, we talk about funding, we talk about allocation, we also be building, we talk about voting for all this governance process those where you're going to have fun. So whatever product you said you're going to build, uh, if you think about NFT and DAOs and the community, you're going to have fun. Yeah, great. And and just to supplement, I, I actually, as part of the course, I will personally be helping you guys to write those uh, $50,000 $50, launch grants. I mean, not to, not, not to guarantee you get it, but I, at least I'll help <laughs> you with applications. And there are mechanisms at Harmony. We will, we will definitely help to launch your career. And once you get the grant, you will get the visibility as well. So... So we should be <laughs> for sure. So no thanks to move on to the third part. So we talk about sure. these products that are applications that are more familiar to the students. And then we talk mm -hmm. about these more, I call core infrastructure consensus, mm -hmm. you know, stateless clients. And these mm -hmm. are maybe a bit deeper. They, they need to mm -hmm. think more and do more research. But now that we have the third part, I think is almost right in between, right? Right. Like mm -hmm. bridges, they are in a sense, mm -hmm. uh, infrastructure, but also mm -hmm. they are more tangible. Everybody knows and use those bridges and, Shall we, mm -hmm. shall we talk about how CK would, yeah. would work in, in that yeah, area? Absolutely. Yeah, I'll power through so that you, you have some sense why all this link is something that you may be curious about. But I will definitely touch on the point about uh, 50,000 launch grants as well as the DAO process, as well as uh, I can almost promise you here that you'll get it if you follow Hagwan. <laughs> he has been writing NIH grants. He has been helping so many students to become professors and research on his own right, how to bootstrap the career. This is as guaranteed as it gets that you get to know uh, some of these like, promising areas, but also knowing Hagwan as someone that really care about mentoring, really care about really the education part, really care about what well, the career opportunity to start. So it is really a guarantee that we really pull all the resources together. We do this course only to give you guys grants to start, get started, uh, not just in Web3, not just in blockchain, but hopefully like particular, uh, all these ZK products. Let's call it a guarantee. Yeah, no promise, <laughs> but, but guarantee. Okay, so with that, uh, I want to power through this because um, I really actually think that this course is actually as technical as a guess that I would be talking about this concept. Uh, most, most of the other talk is really about very, very narrow focus. I actually think this is a, hopefully a good overview of um, the, the best start of a student in a career is choosing which path to go down. So there are lots and lots of paths there, but you should not choose one until you know what they are. They all are, because even in my limited uh, few few uh, weeks of time, these are so exciting, each of them, that I must put out a link for you. I read all the link. I research so much to filter it down. I literally easily read like 100 links before I tell you the three to go down, right? Hopefully, it will make sense to you why these few links would matter. So I'll start with the next one. It's called the Cello, um, like clients. Cello is a great project. Um, so they talk about really billions of users using like client on mobile to talk about as simple as payments. So they come up with a new research called the Plomo as a like client, which is actually really ready for production. It's uh, quite similar to our approach to um, also bridges. So that's why I, I, I really checked them out and I know it works. It's something that you can play with as a product, extending it, playing with the prototype. And it has some other work already. There's a full research paper. There's a like security. As you see some of the links here, like, I, like if you are curious about the like security aspect, audit aspect, maybe you should go hack it. 
By the way, each of the project give easily give out like like hundreds of thousand dollars, if not like million. We put out one million for the security bounties as well. So you don't need to be a full blown like fundraise and bring like onboard users. Whether building infrastructure ops uh, like components for other people to integrate, or even as a hacker, just play with it. Understanding even the security uh, assumption as a cryptographer, you can break by understanding the science and math behind it. And the last part, I also add the uh, ops link because like, there's some of you that actually ops in the sense of like really just playing with like libraries and infrastructure and deploying and see how, what happened, right? There's also a great link that you can see there. I won't summarize ab about the approach already, but it's really fascinating. And we also use similar approach, but they articulate very well in a research paper that they can read about and play with. And they have a product called the Ver, uh, Ver, uh, Ver Laura internal the, like mobile client that you can play with today. It goes without saying that uh, we are going crazy as a project at Harmony to build very similar product as well. So we have a bridge that also talk about with very different network uh, networking um, approach to this that you should play with. We, we use a very practical approach for, for our client that already integrated with Zcash. Zcash that we think is more more ready and practical. And you should tell me how, 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 how it compares. I highlight some of the points so that you will come back and use this as a comparison chart. It's really not complete, it's not a fair comparison to without more of a comprehensive approach. Something in research is called the SOK. It's really a survey paper, but much, much more systematic. They, uh, I call it a framework, right? You have a few way to do different dimension in comparison. It's what I try to do here as well. Right, I, I use user um, as the top for comparison. So SOK paper is really what bring us on the, the thing. But even there, I felt like it's more a theoretical research survey. I put out all the um, like seven products here. It's more of a like which product already have prototypes already have code or which already may even have uh, open source that you can extend and just build your own. You just you can really fork it and actually build a new project on your own. As a matter of fact, some of it has, right? We fork the file client for sure. Um, and you will see like a uh, like new project called Nomad is forking um, the, uh, the uh, uh, like the, you will see the, uh, uh, the optics bridge there, you, you should do it. And that's what science is all about. And for the longest time, the last two decades, that's what open source Linux is all about. You, can, you should fork it and play with it. Just keep the license. And coming to blockchain, that's what's exciting. You can fork it, and even the use and asset will come to you because you can easily compose and migrate and incentivize for people to come. But I'll keep going in the interest of only five minutes left. There's another um, exciting project, uh, a bunch of um, uh, a cryptographer that actually help think about what will be the right even cryptographic libraries that they need. So they help the MIMA project, which again is a top project to think about what will be the client architecture to build. Uh, the most amazing thing about MIMA is they, they actually build the whole recursive snark um, in, in tiny, tiny proof size. Most of all, it done it in no camel. I've been coding in common for 15 years. Just trust me when, when I say this is the most technically fun project that you can hack into as well. Ethereum 1.5 and 2.0 come up with the concept of sharding and sharded accounts. They are still working on the fast sync. Again, any 10% improvement of like two weeks of sync time is what you can work on, very fun. But they're also super practical. Like every few months, there's a huge upgrade of the network, as you guys know. Something from the Merkle tree to the Virgo tree, using some of the new um, like, uh, like primitives, is something that is really ready and they're gonna do the upgrade very soon. So I actually, you don't need to do a project on your own. You don't even need to do it with Harmony or even this course anymore. If you find the right community that you build with, in particular, like uh, Ethereum Foundation always publish very well what you can be part of. And if you take up the concept of um, Ethereum Foundation, let's say Virgo Tree, and you want to build it for Harmony or other similar even chain, that's really your first start. Right, doing something similar, doing something for other projects that you do in our young and we'll love to give you a grant so you should play with it because the impact is going to be tremendous. Uh, the two other quick one is called the Cardano and the Facebook, no, no, um, no, Novi and DM team. Uh, both uh, really talk more about research and a little bit less of a product, but they, they have some like good source code that you can look into as well. Yeah. 
A any um, feedback? Someone just asked, can, can we have questions? But I think let's go through this and then we, we can stay sure. after class for a few more minutes and, and just sure. have more questions. If sure, you're okay. sure. Yeah, Let's do yeah. Um, so, so I just my cue to take my sip of water. So, um, so the last one is uh, another uh, quick overview. Um, the concept of um, bridges is everyone still debating. Is it a role, is it a layer two? Is it a bridge? Are we doing like IBC now? Is everyone IBC? Uh, how can we be concurrent to it? Um, there's still no like BTC to Ethereum. Um, uh, uh, like Bitcoin to Ethereum bridge, even though it has been like prophesized for five years already, is why this is fun, right? How to have a trust us, if not trust minimized bridge? What do we mean by security here is what's exciting. Literally, there are only what I list out like six trustless bridge in the world right now. And how many do we need? We need one bridge between any blockchain. And how many blockchain are there? There are literally easily hundred, right? So n square of it, we literally need like thousands of bridges. Doesn't need to be different architecture, but just to tell you in terms of product, we're still so lacking that most people still need to go back to centralized exchange. Just last year, everyone has some coins, you have some other coins, they go back to centralized exchange so they can swap and come back to a decentralized world so that they can like DeFi yields, right? It's insane, right? Um, finally, there are a few bridges that actually works and actually can swap and that I can tell you that you can fully trust. If not, try to break it, right? The math and the code works is what I claim these are the few uh, places you can start. In particular, uh, there's a SOK paper again that really started very well. It's the same few researcher that really take care of the long-term foundation that you can start with. What Interlay built, something called the Inter, uh, Inter BTC, is finally they figure out with the uh, Bitcoin. Unfortunately, I must say, with Polkadot first. Um, it was great ecosystem there. It was really well done, developer ecosystem, and well researched, but the usage is not there yet. I would still claim that BTC and Ethereum is still the main, main use cases that WBTC wrapped BTC, if not like RUN BTC and also another one, um, uh, uh, another one project that was very well uh, doing BTC uh, of literally uh, close to like tens of billions of like BTC wrapped into uh, Ethereum still through a central entity and something that you need to trust, just a few validators to tell you and you couldn't even participate, you can verify yourself that it must be a great problem for you to solve. And we are launching a BTC bridge as well, hopefully to get you guys the feedback. The second good bridge is a cello um, and near similar actually, um, that finally you don't need another separate set of validator or to have a few people holding the multi-sig to tell you that, oh, trust me, you put my asset there to here, you put your punks, you put your apes, you put your like uh, millions of dollars on our bridge and I'll let you DeFi yield on my network. You shouldn't do that. They finally come up with at least a trustless bridge. Unfortunately, it's still optimistic, meaning if all the validators abandon the bonds and uh, you need to wait seven days, that's okay. So we're also coming with something much shorter in terms of finality, um, not all the way to what uh, student, uh, like CK uh, sync people do like instant within the hour set um, and final. Um, that's what uh, the future is moving to, not optimistic, but have the a strong finality guarantee. So I also highlight two more projects and that'll be it, is what, uh, again, news, news have very strong engineering team. I was very surprised there's not much documentation there, but at least source code. Even I have to resource source code these days to tell you at least whether it's legit, legitimate or not. But that's the fun part, everyone is open source code. Uh, they've been building a Solana client that everyone is measuring about how many guests uh, you need to, um, build a code for. And that's why it's fun. Like when I started my career, we are all building on uh, X86. Uh, Back in the time, there's only, I still remember uh, uh, 664 kilobyte per segment and 6440 uh, uh, in terms of what you can load up when you're putting up docs, memory cards for graphics, all counting bytes, right? And the same thing now, you're doing a global computer. Everyone is counting how many guests you use per transaction because there'll be millions of millions of transactions to do. So don't be discouraged 
when you're doing a smart contract and you have to optimize gas costs, that's always, always going to be true. When people complain, oh, the product is too hard to use. I don't know how to install MetaMask. I don't want to do security audit. I don't want to uh, optimize the gas. Why is it even gas so expensive? They don't know what builders has to go through every decade when you are really, really at the pioneer stage. And that's all I got for today. Yay, great. Thank you so much. Um, I, I need a break for myself as well, talking for an hour. No, so, actually, also, also the, well, yeah. I, I, I inter, interjected a lot, so, but other people will have their mic milled, so we don't hear. Yeah, that. no, thank you, everyone. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I mean, usually, I, I, we set the time to be an hour and, and a quarter. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of trick that knowing that, so people won't be leaving right at a dot, like they, they know that it's <laughs> more than an hour, but I don't think yeah. anyone has a meeting, you know, right at, at this yeah. 75 point so we can yeah. go usually we can go go beyond a little bit so yeah. already some questions here uh, about the bridge part which i also yeah. am really excited about someone asked uh, i said pran again sure. as about what do you think about uh, composable roll-ups right right roll-ups that are not just so one. uh so there are two parts to composable and uh, uh roll up and with different meanings so uh, maybe it's the bridge part so i mentioned composable here so the best a uh, place to read about Composable is uh, this article about intercluster. Finally, people get tired of the word like parachain and shard versus like Zoom and, and all that. People keep coming up with names, right? Even chains are like, um, like, uh, like people use it for different meanings. So Celestia so come up with the name of cluster, meaning really different uh, heterogeneous chains. They need to talk to each other. It's not really Composable. Um, uh, 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 like outside of a chain because the validator are not synchronized. So we do know for a fact that you lose composability whenever you go outside one chain and you will lose composability when you go even to different uh, rollups and layers, even within Ethereum. So that is true for a fact because that is true for a fact to be on data center, that is true for a fact even for internet. Uh, we just need to figure out the programming model and the bonds and the security and the guarantee of your asset, uh, both the custody and as well as the stakes. Um, so the answer is no, um, you, uh, you cannot guarantee the composable. They, they, they kind of proof is very simple proof uh, about what is composable, what is atomic um, uh, across uh, different uh, distributed system. Yeah. And I um, maybe a, a question I can ask on behalf of the student of the class. So, so some people have been working. Uh, we, we actually had Drew uh, in one of the class. I at least gave a video. So some people are working on Drew Stone's uh, the, the web mm -hmm. bridge. And so sure. how how do we go from the web bridge to to this new level of trust? Because people always say that bridges are trustless and and secure, mm -hmm. but there seems to be a different level of complexity involved here. Can you yes. say a little bit? How do we go from web uh, yeah. product to, to this? Absolutely. New so to understand <clears throat> to understand Tornado Cash, which is strictly Ethereum and few asset, to what web our partner Joe Stone and our good friend and what they are trying to build both two things, right? Across chain and mixing across chain asset, extremely difficult. So, but you should at least understand one thing. It's what they call the trust model. So um I didn't talk about it today. Uh, we, we have links on our website and what's not. To understand what is the trust model of all these system and what is the like time and stakes and guarantee. So for to do mixer is really the right problem to attack. And there's no doubt the future and is already here, which is cross-chain and multi-chain. So web is a great, great project for you to get validated. We didn't talk about the mixer only touch on the uh, on the tornado cash because mixer across chain is already top use cases that uh drew stone identified last year right obviously not enough users yet obviously they are all kind of um uh, like uh, security assumptions go figure it out um i wouldn't touch on it here so the lack so the key point is all the <clears throat> all the guarantee must be on chain that's what we call it we call it the smart contract approach right all your uh, validators and, and checks should be on chain. Even our um, wallets are on chain smart contract, the bridge is smart contract, um, is it, your starting point. I will only take one last question because uh, I, do, I, do, um, I, I do have to go after this. Yeah, yeah that, that's actually perfect. So mm -hmm. Sam, Sam asked a question that I think goes to the heart mm -hmm. of the matter. Basically, it's yes. about sharding. So sharding, <laughs> how yes. we all started. 
we've been sharding since. <laughs> My favorite topic. <laughs> well, so, uh, yeah. so how would sharding improve like client capacity uh, capabilities? Yeah. So currently, mm -hmm. basically, I can tell you already, like Harmony is already kind of at Ethereum 2.0. Like we are, we are fully sharded. We are, we have cross mm -hmm. cross shard. Uh, but how does it link to? How does it interact with like clients? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Uh, best question, actually, uh, sharding. Um, sharding is what we study for the last five years. Uh, so at least I can say something about it. And how is sharding related to like clients and all these um, interchain and intershard? Um, it's actually, uh, I wish, really wish a great framework to study it. And all the assumption about data availability as well as bridges because of shard is even more complicated. Uh, the great validation is Ethereum 2 is still going to sharding, right? The great um, validation is every research uh, paper that talk about scalability still talk about sharding, if not taking this as the approach. The contrarian view of it is, and I always keep it in mind, the future will be about zero knowledge proofs, not about sharding, right? So how do I even um, put these two together in my head and I'm still building a sharding protocol and the future is zero knowledge proof. It's also what I keep asking myself every day. Just like, um, just like contrarian view, if not you do AI, you need your generative virtual network to keep telling you how come you have uh, counterfactual stuff and you still like try to like, build a consistent model of it. It's very interesting. So sharding um, of Ethereum, if not Harmony, just the same, uh, if not uh, the longest line of research on scalability is what is called uniform scaling. By the time you search how to scale Ethereum, if not scale blockchain, it gets very confusing. Everyone use different terminology, everyone talk about their own approach without comparing different architecture and research. People very feel come up with consistent terminology to discuss the same thing. In this case, it's actually called scalability without sacrificing decentralization and security. That's a given. Hopefully you guys understand what I mean, the trilemma. But people actually don't talk about what it what it what it takes to do uniform scaling. Sharding, even put it up, take the word sharding at one point. And for sure, people don't talk about Zoom, people talk about extension, every blockchain now for sure, like near as well as Avalanche and, um, and, uh, 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 and uh, Avalanche have, have, a, have, 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 a, have a bridge and, and, and actually a separate chain and super separate, they call it some, some of the kind of shard that talk to Ethereum and they call it the extension. What does it mean? What does the extension mean? You should only ask one thing. Database for the longest time talk about sharding in a very consistent way. And there are like literally 50 decades, uh, five decades of research on database sharding, right? database scalability. It's why sharding is a very technical term people are used to. Sharding means I have the architecture already that works. How do I just add one more shard? And magically you have two X capability, right? So none of the stuff that you read here today have that architecture without sharding, right? But zero knowledge proofs, right? So people figure out that uh, from what we figure out from Bitcoin and Ethereum, the next step must be uh, sharding because uh, for sure you can solve another chain. You can just call yourself extension. You can like honestly fake it and just say, oh, like you have one chain, you have another extension chain, it works too, and it works with you. None of them works because you have another system, another assumption, another validator to do all the dirty work that Ethereum tell you you don't need to do, right? But if you figure out sharding, then you will add another shard and it will just work. You need beacon chain, you need to figure out the cross shard um, communication. And that's what we need to go uniformly uh, scaling before you have zero knowledge proofs. Because zero knowledge proofs, you compress all the states, you can do whatever you want. You can, you can guarantee the verification at the very end that sharding, a shard can use zero knowledge proof to push it back to another shot, to push it a beacon, to push it another um, Ethereum and for the chain for sure. So it's going to be a transition where we're going to figure out all shards and all technology use your knowledge proofs. By before now, I, was in, I can easily say, see five, 10 years still have, you, and you need to have that, right? Think about it for those who understand clouds, uh, why can you just like 
click a button, another uh, uh, like virtual instance, which is startup. You don't you don't think about where are the rack of servers, where are the data center, where are the like uh, Zoom connected. It's where sharding still come in. There are definitely racks of machines. There are definitely different data center, but they are very uniformly scaling by now. Yeah, that's where I went. That's great. I mean, I can see now the next few years are going to be exciting for 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 ours for Harmony, whose identity yeah. have been so linked to sharding, and you just yeah. said the next thing would be for us to get into CK. <laughs> yeah, I well, wish that's I why exciting. You. Yeah, I think yeah, all of I you will be really good in the future this way. Yeah, Ooh, no, I think I think job. you guys have the right start right here. So can't wait to all see right, what you guys so do. All right, thanks, Hawan. Really enjoyed the talk. Yeah, thank you. Thank see you. everyone soon. Yeah, see you guys. Thank